This is the build a, of a very, very small form factor um, LGA 775 bare bone computer. Okay, so before I start, let me just go ahead and show you around the system. Okay, right here we have the power button. Um, up here we have the optical drive bay for a laptop style CD ROM or optical drive. And right here, we just have a blank. I don't think anything's supposed to go here. Um, right here, as you can see, we have a audio input. And, or this is actually an audio output and a microphone port. Um, right here, we have two USB 2.0 ports and a Firewire port. And right there, we have an exhaust vent. So, on the back, hold on one sec while I turn around. So on the back here, we have one expansion card slot. This is a PCIe card slot. Uh, right here, we have PS2 ports for the keyboard and mouse, serial port, parallel port, VGA port. And right here, we have six, or, um, yeah, six USB ports and an Ethernet port. Right here, we have a decent array of audio ports and the power supply. So, let me go ahead and open it up. So, this is a very good design, case design. It's completely toolless. Just do that. And pull the top off. Okay, so here's the inside of the computer. And as you can see here, there's the fan that blows out the front. The cooler actually goes here. There's a fan on the back of the cooler, which I'll show you in a second. Um, there we have the PCIe slot. Um, here we have the hard drive bay, which just pops out like this. Just turn this and pull it out. Like that. Um, right here we have the optical drive bay and the power supply, which is a high pro power supply and it's 220 watts um, right here we have four DDR2 memory slots um, so yeah here's a small heat sink for the chipset um, and right down there are the two SATA ports and then the IDE connectors right there and a weird thing I found is that the cooler sits here, but the fan header for the cooling fan is like right there. So it's kind of inconvenient, but the cord is long enough to reach there, so that's good. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is get this optical drive that I have here. It's a Sony NEC drive. Um, it is a DVD RW drive. So, this computer actually comes with um, a lot of stuff, which I'll show you in a second. Actually, let me get that now. Okay, here's all the stuff it comes with. Um, right here, we have the back plane for the optical drive, which converts the um, laptop style ATA connector into a normal IDE connector for the computer and this also has a floppy style power connector right there um, right here we have a really flattened out IDE cable which is definitely nice when you have a small form factor computer like this right here we have the power cord and right here we have the blinking plate for the optical drive, if you're not going to put an optical drive in there. Um, and then, got a SATA cable, 90 degrees at both ends. And lastly, we have a base, which you can put the computer on to stand it upright. And over here, in this box, we have 
the CPU cooler. As you can see, it's a pretty decent heat pipe cooler. Um, I think this thermal grease is dry, so I'm probably going to have to put some new thermal grease on here. Um, this is where the front fan goes in, the case, and then this is the fan on the back of the cooler. So yeah, I'm going to put that back in. And let's go ahead and get that optical drive installed. So the first thing I need is the back plane. Wherever that is. Uh -huh. So let me get this back plane installed and I will resume the video once I get it installed. Okay, I got the back plane on the optical drive as you can see. And I got the optical drive in the little caddy which slides in the front of the case here. As you can see I had to take the front cover off to get it to get in there easier. But you just go ahead and stick that in there and slide it in. But as you can see I couldn't find a plate that fit on the front of the optical drive that fit in the front of the case but I think I have one that might work but right now let me go ahead and get the power to the optical drive connected okay the power is connected and now I just need to get the IDE cable. Now, actually, I don't have the RAM and hard drive yet, but I do have the CPU. So, actually, I might just, I'm just going to put in the CPU right now. And I will make a video later after I get the hard drive and RAM to put in here and get it to turn on. So, let me go get the CPU. Actually, it's right here. This is a Pentium Dual Core 3.2 GHz CPU. So let me go ahead and get that in there. Okay, the CPU's in, and yeah, so let me get the cooler on, and I will resume the video once I get the cooler on. Just a quick note, there was actually heat sink compound on here, or heat sink thermal grease, whatever, but it was all dry, so I went ahead and wiped it all off. Actually, I peeled it off, it was so dry, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and put some Arctic Silver 5 on the CPU. As you can see, I have some here. And yeah, and then I'll put the cooler on and resume the video. Alright, be right back. Okay, as you can see, the CPU and heatsink are installed. Um, there's the heatsink there. And I'm not going to plug the fan in yet because I need to get the RAM later. And I'm also going to take this out right now just because I don't really need it. Well, I'll get it out later, but yeah, until I get the RAM, I'm gonna have to keep this unplugged most of the way, but I mean, it's fine. I mean, I'll just put it back, plug everything back in once I get the RAM and the hard drive, of course, also. But until then, um, yeah, I'll just resume the video once I get the RAM and hard drive, okay? Okay, as you can see, I got the hard drive and RAM yesterday, actually, but I just put them in, and I also found a faceplate for the optical drive, as you can see, 
it fits perfectly. I actually got it on that HP laptop right there. So, yeah, that helps. Makes it look a lot nicer. And so, let me go ahead and get this hooked up and we can test it out. Be right back. Okay, as you can see, I have it hooked up to a keyboard, mouse, and monitor now. So, let's go ahead and turn this on. Um, actually, I have already installed an operating system and tested a few things out, but I did find a few, two problems with this. Well, one problem and one thing I fixed. Well, the first thing that I fixed, of course, was the... Um, the CMOS battery that came with this computer was dead, so I had to replace that. It was only giving off, giving about 0.25 volts, so obviously that's not enough to keep the CMOS memory. Um, it's supposed to be 3 volts, so I put in a new 3 volt button cell battery, and it now works perfectly. And the problem that I'm having with the it's with the optical drive. It's detected in Windows, but it isn't detected in the BIOS, so I can't boot off it. So, I had to cop put Windows 7 on a flash drive and install it that way. It's the 64-bit edition of Windows 7. So, let me go ahead and boot it up. As you can hear, the fans are kind of loud. And it, I guess it could get annoying after a while, but... It doesn't really annoy me that much. And yes, as you can see, my monitor has some smudges on it. I'm actually fixing another monitor that I'm going to use with this later, once I get it fixed. It's actually a Samsung monitor. But as you can see, it's booting into Windows. Okay, as you can see, I'm on a desktop, so let me show you the Windows Experience Index. Okay, as you can see, it gets a 3.3. As you can see, it has a 3.2 gigahertz Pentium dual core processor in it, and 4 gigs of RAM, which I just put in, obviously and a 160 gigabyte hard drive, if I didn't mention that earlier. Okay, so as you can see, the lowest are the graphics, of course, because this is an integrated, or onboard, Intel GMA 950 graphics. Um, as you can see, the processor gets a 4.7, which is pretty good. This is running 64-bit, like I said earlier. Um, the memory gets a 5.1, and the hard disk gets a 5.5. So Overall, this is a pretty good system. So, let me go ahead and shut it down. And that's the LGA 775 Barebone Computer Build. Hope you enjoyed this video.